OpenAI just had their first ChatGPT keynote. And hoy, are there some interesting things on the way. Although the conference was developer-oriented, several key important updates were also rolled out to the ChatGPT app, and certainly some that might make you consider spending on their Plus subscription. So what can end users look forward to in their ChatGPT app? Well, the major headline features are for ChatGPT4, the newest version which has been upgraded to Turbo, allowing it to have a whopping 128,000 tokens of context. In case you don't know what that means, it's basically that ChatGPT's memory has gotten a massive upgrade. If you're the type to have long, lengthy chats with ChatGPT, only to have it forget half of the things that you've told it, well, with this new update, ChatGPT should be doing that a lot less, if at all. And in case you're wondering how much memory 128,000 tokens is, it's about 98,000 words, which happens to be the length of The Hobbit. So effectively, ChatGPT can now remember a whole hobbit's worth of context. The other major update rolling out to regular end users is ChatGPT's knowledge base. Whereas previously, the knowledge cutoff was September 2021, the new paid version now has a general world knowledge up to April 2023. That's just a few months ago. Along with this massive knowledge update also comes with it a commitment to keep it up to date and not let it fall behind. In fact, let's have a quick look and see what are some of the things that ChatGPT currently knows. Now, if all you do is use the regular ChatGPT, those are the major updates coming to you. However, if you're a business, an entrepreneur, or a power user, stay tuned because there are a couple of more announcements that you might find particularly interesting. For power users, if you have access to the ChatGPT playground using the platform.openapi.com website, you'll now actually have access to a new feature called Assistance. These are slightly customizable versions of ChatGPT where you can drop in and save any prompts or pieces of information that you may have been copy pasting in the past, allowing the AI model to remember and kind of stay trained on those prompts. With the assistance feature, you'll also be able to tell it whether to use the code interpreter and even upload some PDF files to help give it a little bit of context. If this is something that is interesting for you and you'd like to learn how to better customize assistance, please leave a comment in the comment section below and we can do an entire video just on this. In addition to assistance, there was also the announcement of GPTs, which is ChatGPT's own app store, allowing users to create, customize, and publicize chatbots with the most used ones getting a chunk of revenue share opportunity. These are very similar to the assistance that we just discussed earlier, but customizable for a more general use and available on the App Store. Now, the rest of the updates are a little bit more technical in nature, but if you have an interest in integrating ChatGPT into your business application, please stay tuned because some of these might be very relevant to you. So some of the technical updates that rolled out were having a JSON mode, as well as the ability to specify a seed when doing content generation. For those of you who don't know what that means, it basically allows developers to get a consistent output from ChatGPT. This is particularly important if you're building an app or a business process that relies on receiving information in a specific format. Think of it like getting your employees to consistently use a spreadsheet format rather than having to create a new one that's always a little bit different every time you ask them for a report. Besides that, the API can now also call multiple functions simultaneously, allowing you to build more complex environments where ChatGPT can access other applications and other functions at the same time, as well as the ability to bring knowledge from outside sources such as documents and databases. This one is particularly exciting because you can now connect ChatGPT to your database and have it not only run functions, but also provide an analysis on that. Imagine being able to connect sales data 
or an email marketing database and have ChatGPT give you back information on those users or those numbers finding trends that you may have had to have an analyst look at separately. Also added to the API is DALI, ChatGPT4 with vision and access to the new text-to-speech models with the new voices, allowing them all to be used on apps and other business applications. In fact, I don't even think some of these are available on the consumer chat GPT. So if you've got an application that takes advantage of the APIs, these are going to be great for you. Finally, they also announced the ability to fine tune the chat GPT 3.5 16K token model, which basically means that you can now customize this higher memory model with more information to get a much more domain specific model. This is different from the assistants that we discussed earlier, which are a much more surface level way of customizing chat GPT with fine tuning. You can really go in deep and feed it tons of information to get a very topic specific model. They're also allowing this for chat GPT four, but chat GPT four is an invite only program specifically for users who have been using the fine tuning a lot. So hopefully we will get this soon as well. And then the other couple of updates are the improvements to the pricing. So now if you're using chat GPT three and a half and four via the API, it's significantly cheaper up to three times cheaper. And they've also announced their copyright protection where if you are a enterprise user or you are an API user, they will take charge of any copyright lawsuits against you if you were using chat GPT to create the content that is in question. And that is pretty much a summary of the keynote that happened today. OpenAI has come a long way and many of these new features are incredibly exciting. And although I personally prefer open source models myself, OpenAI is still the best overall when it comes to large language models and overall AI features. It still remains the best choice for many applications and we can only hope that competition and the open source community catch up soon to keep OpenAI on their toes. Which of the announced features are you most interested in? Is there anything that you'd like to know more about or covered in more detail in a separate video? Please let me know in the comment section below and we'll do our best to produce it. If you found this helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys on the next one.